It's the most miserable work you could ever do, but I liked it. There's something about it. A river driver just looks forward to next year and go on the drive again. I'm gonna tell you this story, boys, about taking down the drive. Before it all came to an end in 1976, Clarence Jones and countless other log drivers made sure tens of thousands of cords of wood made it down to the mills on the Kennebec and other main rivers each year. It was a labor-intensive method that had been used since the 1600s, and it had a certain allure. Dave Calder started river driving on the Kennebec when he was just 16. He stayed on for 10 years through the very last drive. They were pretty much general skills for a Maine man. If a person grew up in the country in Maine, they know how to use an ax and can't dog. I mean, we did use some tools that were specific to the drive, pickaroons and pick poles, and being able to handle a boat helped. Didn't require high-tech skills. <laughs> you know, it was mostly hand tools, hand labor. It was nothing more than seasonal work, but many river drivers came back year after year. The lucky ones flowed with the seasons. In the spring, they'd work their way north, setting out holding booms at each of the dams. During the hot summer months, they'd man sluiceways to make sure logs didn't get jammed at any of the nine dams. By late summer, they'd head back downriver, bringing up the rear, picking stray logs snagged on the banks and getting them back in the water. Well, the first year that I worked on the drive, uh, Scott Paper had just taken over the mill in Winslow, and they weren't too knowledgeable about things like driving the wood. They insisted that the wood be let go at Bingham. This was early, like in May, when the water was high, so that left a lot of high rear, and they had to hire a lot of people to take that high rear and throw it into the river, and sometimes it was quite a distance. They had to carry it by hand. Then there was the job of getting the logs to the rivers. There was one dramatic metal chute that logs could be trucked to on the Kennebec. But the bulk of this was done by manual labor. There were drivers who started their season way upstream near the top of the log chain. Their job was to get logs into the rivers and streams leading into Moosehead Lake or directly into the Kennebec. That had to be done when it still felt much more like winter than spring. Just up in those stream drives would be working in the ice water. That would be in April. There'd be four feet of snow in the woods when they started driving. They'd keep moving. That's what you're there for, to work. <laughs> Clarence Jones later spent 20 years as a boatman, breaking up log jams in the middle of rivers. Up until the end, this job was best done from non-motorized bateaus. It's hard to explain, but you set that bat out at an angle in the river, and the current helps push you across the river so that you could use our oars to check our speed and maneuver. We had, we had to keep stopping. We had work to do. The rubber rafts it don't make any difference. You hit a rock or not, you just bounce off and go again. But you couldn't go smashing into rocks with a wooden bolt. You'd break it. You, you had to be able to read the river. What many believe began in Maine lasted longer here than anywhere else in the contiguous U.S. In the 20th century, log drives were eliminated in river after river in Maine. Those on the Kennebec held out the longest. In the end, it was a business decision as much as anything. Paper mills were moving away from spruce and fir, the trees that floated best. Cutting four-foot logs, in use since the 1920s to make river driving easier, was no longer cost-efficient. And up to 2% of the logs sank to the bottom of the river each year. There were pending lawsuits claiming pollution and navigational hazards. The floating logs clogged up feeder streams. 
Even Moosehead Lake seemed crowded when log booms 20 to 30 acres in size were under steam. Ironically, the once isolated Great North Woods saw a marked increase in road building after the log drives ended. The biggest change is, is when you got off the river that the road came in. The river drives, by bringing the wood to the rivers and lakes, protected the land by putting less roads out into the hinterland. To river drivers, it was the end of a way of life, even if it was for just a part of the year. Some river drivers even found a way to stay on the river by becoming part of the up-and-coming whitewater rafting industry. I think people were a bit angry. They didn't understand why this thing that some of them had been doing for 30 years all of a sudden had to stop. I think everybody just moved on, picked up and found something else. It's been more than 30 years since the last log drive. To those who lived it, the appeal is as strong as ever. I like being outdoors. Across the Kennebec's quite a beautiful river. One of the nicest things about it was we were moving a lot. We, we weren't in one spot for long periods of time, particularly in the spring and on the rear, we were moving. We'd be going down river every day, a mile, mile and a half, sometimes less, depending on how much wood there was, but we were always moving, seeing different parts of the river, different country, being outdoors was good.